Hey guys, it's Lydia here, and today I'm going to be talking about my must-haves in sign making and any kind of wooden art. So, let's get started. Alright guys, welcome back. So, um, as you guys should know by now, I have been very busy in making lots of wooden signs with my CNC machine that I built, which I will leave the videos to me building that down below. Um, please go check it out. It's very cool, and it was very fun to do. Um, but there are some must-have things that... I really think you guys should know about if you want to get into any kind of um, like wooden crafts or like me um, some wooden signs um, and it's super fun to do but I have put together um, a list of things that I believe you should have if you are doing this so let's get right into that and I'll start to show you guys what you need alright so the first things I want to talk about are the base layers that I put on my wood before I actually start carving um, or do anything, any painting, anything like that. So, um, as you guys have seen, um, in the step-by-step -step tutorial on how I make my signs, I use wooden stain. So my go-to stain is this ebony or ebony, um, stain. It is like a darker black kind of stain, like a black brown. And I really like it. It turns out really nice on any style wood. Um, it looks very, very nice on pine. Um, but I've also used it on a different, like, maple and, uh, also some walnut. Um, and it looks really good. It's just really clean and very dark, but it comes out very nice. And sometimes when I stain it and then I carve out the letters, it just makes the letters pop out even more because of how dark it is. Um, but it's also very easy to sand away and give a rustic look, which is another thing I really like about that stain. Um, but I do use other stains, natural stains, oak wood stain, um, gray and white stain also. But stain is definitely a go-to for me. Uh, because I like to give the wood a little bit of extra pop. So next, after I stain, um, I usually put coats of sealer on top. So uh, one of my go-tos for waterproofing a uh, sign is just polyurethane. I like to clear satin, um, and this is actually oil-based, which makes things a little harder when I clean. So I think once I'm done with this um, can, I will go to the water base. It's a little bit more expensive, but it definitely saves you a lot of um, time and cleaning and it just looks nice I mean either way both of them look nice but this is fast drying but also for popping out letters for signs I like to use the spray on polyurethane so this is the spray on and um, it's I believe it's like seven dollars so I think this was about nine and this is seven so obviously this is pretty expensive for how much you get here this is 11 ounces and this is 32, and, but the thing about this is it's super easy to put on, um, and it also f dries very fast. So the only time I usually use that is when I use, or when I make popped out signs. So when I cut the letters out, glue them on there, and it has to be waterproofed. I usually only use the polyurethane when something has to be waterproofed. Um, other than that, the only time I put it on is for a base coat after I put stain on so that I can get a really clean cut from the CNC machine. But then if I do not have a, um, if I have a sign that doesn't have to be waterproofed, I like to use polycrylic. And this is actually super expensive. This was about $17, I believe. Um, and then, but the one good thing about this is it is water-based, so it's super easy to clean up. And then I got a nice brush with it too. So when you use polycrylic, you really want a um, good brush that doesn't leave anything behind. Um, it looks kind of white, but it dries clear. And I also use this for anything that I uh, make white letters on, even if it's going to be out outdoor, because the polyurethane leaves a yellowish residue on the white paint. Um, so if I painted a board and then put polyurethane over it, uh, if I painted it white and put polyurethane over it, um, then the white would turn like yellow. So I, so I picked up some polycrylic, and this works very nice. Um, you can use this for a bunch of different crafts. Um, even if it's not woodworking like what I do, but it is super nice and I think it's definitely worth the money. So next, um, if I do make a sign that has popped out but doesn't need to be waterproofed or it um, does have white letters that are popped out, I will use uh, just clear spray paint. So like I mentioned, I use polyurethane for popped out letters, um, but that is usually only when um, they are not white uh, letters. So when they are white letters, or it is an indoor sign, um, I like to put a clear coat of this um, also satin uh, crystal clear clear spray paint. Now I can use either, it uh, doesn't matter the brand I use, 
Sometimes I use a different brand than this, but this is just what I ordered. Uh, but I like to get the 25% more um, can. It is a bigger can than the normal size, and it is um, it obviously is a little bit more expensive, but it's um, in the long run, it's cheaper than buying two cans. And they actually last a long time. Um, so they are actually indoor and outdoor. I just have to make sure I put enough coats on them, on the signs, um, if I do have it outdoor. But I usually um, don't put white on an outdoor one. I just haven't recently, uh, but it dries super fast and super like um, matte, which obviously it's satin, but um, I think it looks really nice and it gives the sign a clean finished look and everything is nice and sealed. So finally, um, for the paints, I, uh, I actually learned the hard way. Um, so you guys know that I use an airbrush for painting my letters um, and painting my engraved letters also. And I actually have been using the Line Touch and the Master Touch acrylic paint from Hobby Lobby. Uh, this is actually pretty expensive now that I look at to compared to what I should have been using. Um, so that stuff is super thick and I always have to water down my acrylic paint no matter what kind it is for my airbrushes because it's too thick. But this stuff is super, super thick. Um, and once I had to water it down, the mixture that I use is like water and glycerin and glycerin is sticky so when I add a lot of my that mixture to that paint it um, doesn't allow the paint to dry fully and it um, leaves a sticky residue on the paint which I learned the hard way as I said um, but I just went and picked up some new acrylic paint from Hobby Lobby these are 16 fluid ounces um, and they were like uh, four dollars three dollars each and um, that is just there's a huge price comparisons um, from this so these are I believe like four four ounces here and this is 16 and that was five dollars and this was three dollars so there's a huge price difference so my tip is if you're painting any kind of letters definitely go with this type of acrylic paint not the um, not this stuff so I realize that this is more for like detail canvas painting and not for what I'm what I'm doing um, so definitely just go for this. Now you don't have to go for this specific brand, um, but I really like uh, this brand and it's super nice. And then also I use Apple Barrel for the colored ones, the um, just like certain custom colors, uh, like my dinosaur sign that I made. But I just decided to pick up huge bottles of black and white because that is what I usually use for my signs. Um, the black and white contrast each other and it looks really nice. So that is it uh, for the video. I hope you guys understood what I was saying. Um, I will leave links to all this stuff down below to where you can get it um, online. Uh, but I usually get most of mine in store because I have hardware stores near me uh, like Menards, Home Depot, and then once again uh, Hobby Lobby for my craft stores. But um, I will leave them down below where you can get them on Amazon. Uh, they're super nice products and um, if you have any questions on any other materials that you should be using for any kind of wood crafts or sign making like me just let me know down below in the comments um thanks so much for watching and i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i hope to see you in the next one bye